Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Where warning signs missed, the attorney for the families of victims of the Oxford High School shooting have released new evidence about what led up to the tragedy. And it came from interviews with school employees who had contact with Ethan Crumbly before the shooting. Yes, attorney Ben Johnson unveiled a new picture drawn by Crumbly and emails sent between those school employees. Jason Colthorpe joins us now live downtown. And Jason, the news conference just wrapped up. So tell us more about what you learned. And these families, Rhonda, were listening, clients of Ben Johnson, listening to him unveil this for the first time. So we were seeing their reactions in real time as he laid out more evidence from what happened in the days and weeks leading up to that shooting on November 14th, 30th. Ben Johnson, by the way, the attorney representing uh, in the civil suit, the families of Tate Muir, Justin Schilling, and Keegan Gregory, who was in the bathroom with Justin Schilling and injured. After the latest round of dep uh, depositions uh, uh, of Ethan Crumley's math teacher, two counselors, and the dean of students, Johnson announced uh, some of the more startling findings, and you just mentioned some of them. A new drawing. Take a look at this drawing that they uh, unveiled. Uh, now, part of that is a gun magazine, they say. Now, it, that's a little ambiguous, but they say when you couple it with the fact that the drawing of the person there that's of him once was holding a gun, but then they say you could clearly see it, it had been erased. He says another teacher also expressed concern about Crumbly's writing assignment, an autobiography which had disturbing details, as well as another assignment. And he says the counselors testified in the deposition over and over that things like this were not concerning and more like that's just Ox Oxford kids and their guns. And then uh, I want you to listen. Johnson was asked about what a teacher's role is now given all of this. Is it to report any and all items of concern just to the next in the chain of command or should they be going directly to police and other authorities? This drawing? Yes. Two drawings? Yes. My life is useless? Yes. With a dead body bleeding all over? Yes. I am saying that. And anyone that says differently shouldn't be teaching. To me, this is beyond neglect. It's unforgivable. We have for angels that are, they're gone. You know, um, I can't find an excuse for dropping the ball again and again and again. We're learning all of these months later that this could have and should have been avoided. These children should be with us here today. Now, there are more depositions in this case. Civil suit's a long way from starting. The next trial date isn't, uh, court date, I should say, isn't until February, and that's not even the beginning of the trial. Uh, ben Johnson says there are several more depositions to go uh, through the end of the year. They'd like to depose as well Ethan Crumley and his parents, but right now they're involved in a criminal case, and that's unlikely, so we'll see where it goes from there. Coming up later on Local 4 News at 5, you'll hear from uh, Tate Muir's father, and also Keegan's mother in all of this. For now, we're live downtown. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. And you can only imagine the pain that it is for these parents to talk about all of this and relive the loss of their children over and over. Jason, thank you. Also this morning, suspected shooter Ethan Crumbly appeared in court. Every month, a judge decides whether Crumbly should be kept in the Oakland County Jail, jailed with adults, or sent to a juvenile facility. The judge decided to keep Crumbly at the Oakland County Jail. Crumbly's trial is set for January. Well, right now, we want to turn to your 411 forecast, your 411 weather. Today, the official start of fall later tonight. Uh, except right now, it's really starting to feel like it. Look at this. Temperatures have dropped, what, 30 degrees than what we're used to? Yes. You definitely got to throw on a sweater, maybe grab your, your closest pumpkin spice latte and usher in this new season. Right? I know. You know, I leave so early in the morning as we both do. My mm -hmm. husband and I were texting. He's like, I hope you brought a wrapper and jacket. <laughs> it's really chilly out here. <laughs> I was like, in an instant, Brandon, 89 degrees one day, and now we're in coats putting the heat on the next. Mm. Could we see 30s overnight no. tonight? Slow down. Little bit of a an upfront tease here with how chilly it is going to be, but the autumnal equinox, the official start of fall, 9.04 p.m. tonight. So I guess technically it's still summer. Can't you feel it? 
<laughs> We've got middle, upper 50s to near 60. The wind is the story out of the northwest gusting close to 30 miles an hour all across Metro Detroit. And we are seeing uh, a few showers on the lighter side here up near Lapeer. Not a whole lot going on here, but a couple of drips and drops. And this will be a little bit of a theme as that northwest wind grabs cool air. Cloud cover off of Lake Michigan heading our way, but not going to be a real wet day. Just certainly not going to be a warm one. More clouds than sun and occasional spritz. A little spit and drizzle. 63 the afternoon high. More on those fun overnight lows coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. We'll see you here in a few. Meantime, after months of negotiations, nurses at the University of Michigan have reached a deal, a tentative agreement that is now in place to keep them on the job. Earlier this month, the nurses union voted in favor of giving its bargaining team the, the permission to strike. That strike was avoided. Nick Monticelli reports it appears that that strike was averted and why. You know, what's interesting about this, too, is that this union actually voted to strike earlier this month, so they could have gone on the picket lines at any moment, and it sounds like this tentative deal prevented that from happening by that much. Nearly 6,200 nurses at the University of Michigan Hospital have been working without a contract since July, and they've been negotiating since March. And even though a strike was authorized earlier this month, a tentative deal is now in place to keep nurses off the picket lines. Nurses were frustrated over their workloads, pay, and parking. The new contract appears to address some of the issues. Highlights include an end to mandatory overtime, an improved mechanism for enforcing contractual workload ratios, and competitive wages to recruit and retain skilled nurses. The union president says our elected nurse negotiating team is unanimous in believing that this agreement is a win for everyone who cares about nurses and the quality of care at the University of Michigan. Next, the nurses get an opportunity to see the details of this contract, the ins and outs, and see if they are okay with it. They get to vote on it or reject it in the coming days. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, thank you. Classes are back in session after a cyber attack in the South Redford School District. We were there. Students returned for the first time in, in about two days. The district, as you know, closed school on Tuesday and yesterday after that cyber attack was first discovered. The district says its cyber forensics team was able to isolate the cyber attack before the threat spread throughout the district. The district also says that there has been no evidence to this point of a data breach. A crash backed up traffic this morning as people were making their way to work and it involved three cars and a semi truck on northbound I-75 right near Kniff in Detroit. Now we don't know exactly yet what caused this crash or if anybody was hurt, but we are working to get more information for you. The number of Americans filing for unemployment rose slightly. Applications for unemployment rose by 5,000 from last week to 213,000. This comes as the Federal Reserve raised interest rates yesterday. That all in an effort to bring down decades of high inflation. The four week average for claims actually fell by 6,000. The feds are predicting a big slowdown in the economy and rising unemployment as it battles inflation. All right, so if you drive on I-94 near downtown Detroit, listen to this. There is a major construction project beginning in just one week, and it's going to last for about five days. Starting on Thursday, September 29th, both sides of I-94 are going to be shut down between I-75 and I-96. Crews there are working on the 2nd Avenue Bridge. So to get around this, drivers are going east of I-94, should take I-96 to 75 and then get back on to 94. If you're traveling westbound I-94, drivers there take I-75 to 96, then you can get back on I-94. This is a project we mentioned is going to go until uh, five days until Tuesday, October 4th. So southeastern Michigan is going electric, all thanks to SMART. Yes, SMART is introducing its new electric fleet that will keep people moving at a lower cost. This will happen in Macomb, Oakland, and Wayne counties. These four new electric transit vehicles are part of a new collaboration with DTE and Proterra. County leaders were at today's unveiling saying that they are excited for this new electric fleet of buses. Those county leaders hope that there will be more EVs coming in the future. Still ahead, a recall alert for anyone with a Tesla. We'll tell you about the issue that could cause a driver or passenger to get hurt. 
More on that and here's Chris. Former President Donald Trump is responding to a $250 million lawsuit filed against him. I'm Chris Pallone in Washington. I'll tell you what he had to say coming up.